Well, this last week was chock full of news, like just about every week nowadays. And, um, you know, we hear about the, the war in Ukraine and what Russia's doing. We hear about what's going on at the border, <clears throat> price of inflation. Did you ever think you'd be paying four fifty for a gallon of gas? And all these things that are going on, and they're, they're important. Of course, the most important thing is if Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are going to get a fair trial. <laughs> Isn't it funny how the media wants you to focus on, it's kind of like a magician, you know? Or like a pickpocket, oh look over here while they steal your wallet. You know, it's, but something took place this week that is monumental that most people didn't even realize happened. For the first time in 50 years, our Congress had hearings and they listened to military experts and scientific experts about the subject of UFOs and UAPs. Now I know what you're saying. Okay, everybody, put on your tinfoil hats. Here we go. <laughs> now, UFOs, as we know, stands for Unidentified Flying Object. But whenever you say that, people say, oh, you're one of those wackos, huh? So then they changed the name to UAPs, which means Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, because that sounds more sophisticated, sounds more scientific, but it's the same thing. There's things flying around in the sky and we don't know what they are. Now, I believe they're one of three things. They're either military uh, aircraft that we don't know about, or they're just weird apparitions or there's some kind of scientific explanation of swamp gas or whatever. But then there's also a legitimate UFO, UAP, and that's what I want to talk about today. And you're going, why in the world would you talk about that? I came here to hear, Jesus loves me, yes I know, for the Bible tells me so. Well, if, if you haven't heard it before, Jesus does love you, okay? But this is pertinent because as we go along, hopefully I'm going to make it more and more an apparent to you. I want to start out by a conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. Now we know the famous thing that Jesus said to Nicodemus that everybody's heard of. He said, hey, yo, Nick, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And he talked to him about being born again. But then in John chapter 3, verses 12 through 13, he said this to Nicodemus in that same conversation. He said, if I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, there's conversations that we can have about what's going on in the world. You know, how the grass grows and, you know, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. Those are normal conversations. But there's heavenly things, or in other words, spiritual things that are taking place. And if you can't even understand, and you have a hard time believing when I tell you something earthly, how are you going to understand if I tell you things that are spiritual, things that are heavenly? And I believe God wants to share those with us. And it explains a lot of what's happening in the world today. In John chapter 4 and verse 24, Jesus said to the woman at the well, He said, God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So Jesus is telling us, a great fact that God, there is a God, and He's a spirit. See, Paul told us the things that are seen are temporal, the things that are unseen are eternal. I can see you. Can you see me? Guess what? A hundred years from now, none of us are going to be here. We're temporal. We can be seen. But around us right now is a spirit world. Jesus is telling us that God is a spirit, and there's a spirit world around us right now. We can't see it because it's eternal, and God is eternal. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul said this, 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now who's this natural man that Paul's talking about? The natural man is, um, that word natural is translated as carnal. Someone who's carnal relies on just the five senses. What you hear, see, smell, taste, and feel. And that's all I believe in. And if you can't, if I can't see it, smell it, taste it, or hear it, or feel it, I don't believe in it. And, you know, that's what science says. I want to look at it, something under a microscope or out of a telescope. And if I can't see it and I can't put it in a test tube or a Bunsen burner and beat on it with a hammer, I don't believe it exists. And with that kind of limited acceptance of reality, you're missing out on the vast majority of creation. Because Paul goes on to say, if you try to talk to somebody who's just carnal, they only care about what they can hear, see, smell, taste, and feel, and you talk to them about spiritual things, they're foolishness unto him. Come on, don't tell me that there's angels around here and there's a God. Well, if there's a God, how come I've never seen him? And I always say to people, oh, so you only believe in things you see? Well, do you believe in gravity? I hope so, or else your head would be bouncing off the ceiling. <laughs> you can't see gravity. Does that mean it exists? Do you breathe air, oxygen every day? Can you see it? There's a lot of things we can't see that exist. Now, in... Oh, and then he goes on to say, because if you're going to receive these spiritual things from God, they're spiritually discerned. That means you need spiritual discernment. Um, one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gift of discerning of spirits. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, Paul says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When was the last time you saw a principality? When was the last time you heard a power. When was the last time you felt spiritual wickedness? When was the last time you tasted wickedness in high places? So does that mean they don't exist? Well then the Apostle Paul is lying to us. Because he says we're in a wrestle, we're in a battle. If you don't believe me, turn on the news. See the atrocities of what people are doing to one another and why are they doing this? Because there's a spirit world behind us that are motivating and influencing people to do the things that they do. And there is a world of principalities, powers, darkness, and spiritual wickedness. And that exists. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9-11, through 11, Paul said this, Even him, in this case he's talking about the Antichrist or the son of perdition, whose coming is after the working of Satan. Satan? You mean you believe there's a devil? Well, you don't believe there's a devil. Just turn on the news, see what's going on. You can see his handiwork every day. The working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And this, this being, who's a spiritual being, Satan, he has spiritual powers. And what he does is he represents to this physical world signs and wonders, but they're lies because he's trying to deceive us. Now, I just said all that to lay down the groundwork that there is a spirit world going on around us. And yes, there is a God, and there's godly angels, but there's a fallen angel by the name of Lucifer who became Satan, the deceiver, and he has a third of the angels that are with him, and they're stirring up big trouble. And they're the ones that we're wrestling against, these principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and darkness of this world. Now. Back to the realm of UFOs and UAPs. What's that got to do with anything? 
I want to share with you a brief portion of Ezekiel chapter 1. And I, I encourage you to read the entire first chapter of Ezekiel. This is what it says. Starting at verse 13, I'm going to read through 21. As for the likeness of the living creatures, these are things that Ezekiel saw. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces, the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl. Beryl is amber or a reddish color. And, their, and they had four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their wings were full of eyes, around about four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When they went, these went, and when those stood, these stood, and when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up against them, and the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Now what Ezekiel is, is describing, what he saw, is these things that looked like a wheel inside a wheel, and they moved like lightning, like flashes of light. And some of times when they turned, they were the color of barrel, like red or amber. And they could move without turning and stopping. They could just go here, go there, and then they would just disappear. And what was happening is these spirits, underneath them were these wheels within wheels, and the spirit of these creatures were in these wheels. Now, there's all kinds of evidence of unidentified things flying in the air. And like I said, some of them can be explained scientifically as some kind of weird phenomenon. Um, the stealth fighter that came out of Area 51 for many years, nobody even knew what it was. Well, it's a military vehicle that the government developed. But there's other things that there's no explanation for them. And for the first time in these congressional hearings, they're allowing people in the military who have seen these things flying up there that there's no explanation for them, they're allowing them to testify. Because it used to be, if you were a pilot and you saw something weird and you reported it, that's a check mark on your, your record and you could be grounded. And most military pilots, when they get out of the military, they want to be airline pilots. Well, they're, you're not going to get hired by Delta or American Airlines if you think you see UFOs. They're going to give you a tinfoil hat and say, go work at McDonald's. So nobody's going to say anything. But now they're allowing these testimonies to come in, and there's literally hundreds of people waiting to finally testify to what I've seen. Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, a Democrat and a Republican, so it's not one party or the other, they both claim to have seen UFOs. I've got people in this congregation that have seen UFOs. I've seen UFOs. My wife has. And I don't wear a tinfoil hat. So what these things are, are acting like, let me, let me try to explain this to you. Get a piece of paper here. Now the universe, science tells us, the physical universe is about 150 million years wide, million light years wide, okay? So for any kind of flying contraption of any kind to go from one end to the other, that takes a long time. A light year is how long it takes light 
or how far light travels in one year. I'm sorry, I forgot what that number is, you may know. So how can you go that far? But if this was the universe, and it's 150 million light years from here to here, now the book of Isaiah says that God measures the width of the heavens with the span of His hand from here to here. So God says to 150 million light years, yeah, it's about that big. We'll talk about a big God. But what if you know of portals? And I'm going to show you Scripture about portals. And you know how to go like this. How long does it take to get one end of the universe to the other? There's wormholes and there's portals out in outer space. And I'm, you're going to say, oh, all right, here he goes. He's getting pretty goofy on me now. But I'm going to show you Scripture that talks about that. Because there's people in the Old and New Testament that have seen and experienced these things. But when they see these UFOs, they're going this way, then all of a sudden they go that way. Now nothing physically in the world of physics can do that dramatic of an about change or the G-forces would crush what's inside that. But not if you're a spirit. And you can turn like Ezekiel saw. With, they can move in any direction without stopping and without turning. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, there was a man, a prophet, by the name of Elijah. And he was training his protege, a man named Elisha. And in 2 Kings 2.11 it says this, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, Elijah and Elisha, they're those tinfoil hat people. They're making that up. They're a bunch of liars. Well, I beg to differ with you because God's word is not a lie. What Elisha actually saw, or what Elisha saw of Elijah, they're just walking down the street talking. And all of a sudden, a chariot of fire. Now, a chariot, back in those days, a chariot was a big cart that went behind horses. And instead of walking or riding a donkey or a horse, you would get to ride in this thing they called it a chariot. Today we call it an automobile or an airplane or a snowmobile. These are all forms of chariots and they operate on horsepower. But this chariot was on fire, or so it appeared, like these things that Ezekiel saw. And it just all of a sudden was there and Elijah the prophet gets into it and in a whirlwind, a tornado of wind, he went right up into heaven. So, are there such a thing as unidentified flying objects? The Bible has just given us two examples. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1, the Apostle John just got done explaining to us the seven church, the messages to the seven churches in Revelation. And after that, because the book of Revelation is divided into three sections. Jesus said, I want you to write down what I'm going to tell you, John, because this book is comprised of what was, what is, and what is to come. Now, he just wrote the seven churches of Revelation about what is. Now he's going to explain to John what is about to come. And in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, it says, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. <clears throat> and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. And if you read the entire chapter of uh, Revelation chapter 4, John is on the Isle of Patmos, a little rock in the middle of the Aegean Sea, and all of a sudden he looks up, and that word door in the Greek is the word portal. A portal is opened up in the sky, and John from the Isle of Patmos, he heard a trumpet. Sound familiar? Someday we're going to hear a trumpet, and we're going to meet Jesus in the air. Because John now goes into the throne room where God is, just like we're going to do someday in a rapture. 
we're going to hear the trumpet. And just like that, the twinkling of an eye, that's how long it took John to go through that portal, through that opening, and get into the throne room. And that's going to happen to us. Unless we die ahead of time, well then we'll just go a different way. We won't be raptured, we'll just go a different way. But John went through this portal. And there are portals. Now, in ancient history, there's stories that seem kind of like like mythology and fables but in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2 it says this that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they saw now I've had debates with people before that there's no such thing as female angels and some people say oh I know there is I just feel like there is okay well like I've always said, it doesn't matter what you say and it doesn't matter what I say. It only matters what God says. Amen. If there's any female angel, show me one in the Bible. Zippo. It says the sons of God, not the daughters of God. The, the masculine spirits, these angels, looked down upon the earth and they saw women. Because ladies... Like I've talked a few weeks ago, the last thing that God created in existence was a woman. And he said, my creation is not complete until I make a woman. And ladies, I know you're beautiful in so many different ways, but physically there's nothing like you. And these angels said, wow, I've never seen anything like that. I would like one of them. <laughs> and in the book of Jude, it says that the spirits of old, they left their first habitation to come down to earth to intermingle with women. Now, Paul talks about there's, there's different kinds of flesh in the world. There's a flesh of birds and fish and things that creep on the earth. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever eat a hamburger? Did you ever eat a fish sandwich? Did you ever eat a chicken sandwich? They don't taste the same, do they? But all that flesh came from the earth. It's flesh that's terrestrial. But Paul said there's flesh that's celestial. It's from above the earth. That kind of flesh can appear and disappear. That's right. Amen. The book of Hebrews tells us many of us have entertained angels unaware. Jesus, after he was resurrected, appeared in the upper room, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. And someday we're going to be like that. But these sons of God, they left their first habitation and they came down here to intermingle with women. And then in Genesis 6, chapter 4, it says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in under the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, I'm not saying this. This is in the book. What he's talking about is we've had, we have Greek and Roman mythology where Zeus came out of heaven, had sex with a human woman, and their offspring was Hercules. Oh, that's just fables. That's mythology. No, it's not. God says these are the men of renown. In ancient history, before the flood, there was a type of construction called megalithic building you know if you ever watch like ancient aliens and some of those shows it's interesting but unfortunately 90 percent of what they say is Ooh, they made it up but 10 percent is true that's why you can do these archaeological digs and you find all these temples and these different structures and civilizations like atlantis fell into the sea these are the buildings that these sons of God and their offspring built on the earth before the flood. That's why God looked on the earth and he said, I repented that I even made man because I didn't want it to end like this. So he had to destroy every living thing except Adam, I'm sorry, except for uh, Noah and his sons because they were perfect in their generations. And that word perfect means untainted. They didn't have any of that demonic fallen angel spirit or DNA in their body. 
So that's why when you know they go deep sea diving and they find civilizations under the ocean, how did that happen? Well, because before the flood, there was only streams, rivers, and seas. There were no oceans. But when the flood came, the fissures of the earth broke up and water came up shooting up from underneath the earth, inside the earth. And the firmament, which was a band of protection over the earth, caved in and, and washed out everything and flooded the earth. So everything drowned except for the eight people in the ark and those animals. Oh, I don't believe in any of that. Well, then go see the ark down in uh, Tennessee. I've seen it. I've been there. If a man can build that, I think God could build that through uh, Noah and his sons. And when everything dried up, where'd all that water go? It's called the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean. And when you go underneath there, you can see these structures that at one time were built on dry ground. Do you know at one time, scientifically, and of course whatever science says we have to believe, even though God says professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. But sometimes science is right. But scientists and archaeologists say that at one time, the Sphinx in front of the Pyramid of Giza was actually covered with like a plaster type material and it was painted, it was very bright and colorful. If you go there now, half his face is gone and it just looks like sandstone. Well, if you have the entire firmament fall on top of you and you are underwater with seawater spinning around for a year, you might have your face worn off too. <laughs> so, the reason I'm saying all that is because the angelic world has intermingled with mankind before. And that's why Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. He's warning us. Here's some interesting stories. In Daniel. Now Daniel is captive in Babylonia. And he's praying to God for help. And God's not answering his prayers. I know this has never happened to you, but sometimes I pray and I don't feel like I get an answer. I know you're all much more spiritual than me. And you just say, hey, yo, God, give it to me. And he just knocks on your front door. Here you go. But Daniel wasn't hearing anything. And he was getting frustrated. So in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, someone just shows up out of nowhere. Out of the spirit world comes in and face to face talks to Daniel and says this, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the God, thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now this angel's telling him, as soon as you pray, God heard it. I guarantee you, is the maker of the ear unable to hear? If you feel like I'm all alone and nobody cares and I pray and God doesn't help me, that's a lie from hell. God hears every whisper in your heart. You're the apple of His eye. He's listening to everything you say. He knows your thoughts. He knows every intent of your heart. And when you ask for something, don't get upset if it doesn't come right away. There's a lot of reasons why you don't get things right away. Remember that sermon I preached years ago? When you pray, sometimes the answer is slow. Sometimes the answer is grow. Sometimes the answer is no. And sometimes the answer is go. But there's always an answer. But with Daniel, the answer was coming from heaven, the third heaven. You know, the Apostle Paul talked about, he says, I ascended into the third heaven and saw things that's not lawful for man to repeat. Well, there's three heavens? Yeah. The first heaven is the Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere, the stratosphere. The second heaven is where the physical, the celestial bodies revolve, the physical universe that we can see with the telescope. 
But the third heaven is outside of that. Because remember, God says, yep, the physical universe is about that big. Talk about a big God. And the third heaven is outside of that where he lives. And Paul went through this portal in time, because I believe he was stoned to death in the book of Acts, and he went to the third heaven and saw things that's not lawful for man to repeat. So when Daniel prayed, the message came from God, but in the, the physical universe and in the earth's atmosphere, there's a battle going on. That's why Paul said we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And this angel was fighting until Michael, the archangel, came. And he said, I'm going to kick some butt for you, boy, so you can get down there and tell Daniel, we know what you're going through. We're on your side. You don't mess with Michael. Michael is, he's a tough one. So, there's another story. In John, chapter 1, verses 50 through 51, Jesus had just met Nathanael. And when Nathanael comes up to him, he says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And then he said, I, and Nathanael says, How do you know me? I've never met you. He says, Oh yeah, I saw you when you were under that fig tree praying. And he says, I believe you're the Messiah. And Jesus said, Oh, you're easy. Yeah, that was easy. And then in 1 John, I'm sorry, John chapter 1, verses 50 through 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw the end of the fig tree. Believest thou? Listen to this. Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, which means truly, truly, listen to me. I'm telling you something really important. Hereafter you shall see heaven open. There's that portal. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, I don't remember. I've read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I don't ever remember angels ascending and descending on Jesus. But what he's referring to is in Genesis 28, and verse 12, Jacob was wandering through the wilderness and he was tired. So he laid down in the desert and put his head on a rock and he fell asleep. And in Genesis 28, 12, and he dreamed... And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, that third heaven again. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. What Jacob saw in Jacob's ladder was spiritually this ladder going from earth through the first heaven, the second heaven, into the third heaven, where the apostle John went, where the apostle Paul went, and angels were ascending and descending on this ladder. Well, what is this ladder? Jesus just told Nathaniel, I'm the ladder. Amen. You're going to see angels descending and ascending upon me, the Son of God. I am the ladder. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to the Father but by me. He's not kidding around. You want to get to the third heaven where God lives? There's only one way. And it's Jesus. He's the ladder. You know, I've got a friend right now who's toying with the idea of becoming a Buddhist. And I'm hoping I can get a chance to talk to this person. But Jesus is still alive. Siddhartha Gautama, who became the first Buddha, is dead. That's right. Amen. And Buddha's final words before he died were, I seek truth. Well, Jesus said, I am the truth. So Buddha said, I'm looking for Jesus. The only way to get to God the Father is through Jesus the Son. He's the ladder. And Jesus tells Nathaniel, you're going to see that. These are spiritual things happening from this carnal, physical world through the spirit realm, and there's angels, these spiritual beings. Now, you may ask, all right, that was interesting, but what in the world are you talking about? You're, this is confusing. This, you know, I don't want to hear this kind of stuff. Why are you even bringing this up? There's a reason. There's a method to my madness. One, because I prayed and I believe this is what the Lord wanted me to share with you, which is the most important thing. But remember last week in my sermon when I talked about Matthew 24, when the disciples came to him and said, Lord, 
Show us the signs of when you're coming back. And the very first thing Jesus said was take heed that no man deceive you. Is there any deception out there in the world? <laughs> Go on YouTube. There's a Messiah that will tell you anything about anything. Right. Everybody's got the answers. Everybody's a prophet. Everyone's heard from God. Everybody is the Christ. Every, I mean, it's, deception is everywhere. I'm sure I'm glad we have a media that tells us the truth. Boy. <laughs> so Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. And what did the Apostle Peter say? He said, Be sober and be vigilant because there's an adversary out there. It's the devil. And he's roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Daniel, you said earlier about your, you know, it's good to get together with other people. Just watch National Geographic. Every single time the lions are crouching in the weeds, and when the gazelles run by, it's the ones that are trailing off at the end that aren't with anybody. Those are the ones the lions jump on. So the reason I'm bringing this up. And the reason I believe the Lord wants me to bring this up is because there's a great deception out there and the deception is going to grow even stronger. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, Paul says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That one scripture tells us three very important things. There is a character out there by the name of Satan. I don't want to scare you, but there is a devil. That's the truth. And guess what? He's trying to get advantage of us. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh no, the devil's going to get me. But calm down. Jesus says, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And Paul goes on to say, this Satan wants to get to take advantage of us but we are not ignorant of his devices. You know why we're not ignorant of his devices? Because his word tells us his MO. He gives us an idea of what he's going to do. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15, Paul says this, And no marvel, in other words, don't be amazed, don't be surprised, but this character, Satan, he's transformed as an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, what in the world's that got to do with UFOs and UAPs? Because these things flying around as light, as messengers of light, it's nothing more than the devil trying to confuse people, trying to deceive us, and those that work with him, his minions, the third of the angels that fell, they're doing the same thing. Those things that you see up there, they're not aliens coming from another planet. There is a character by the name of Aleister Crowley, whose nickname was The Beast, 666. By the way, he happens to be on the cover of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Gee, I wonder what, how he got there. But he, with his tantric sex magic which would conjure up evil spirits and one of the spirits that he brought forth out of just out of nothing he drew a picture of it and you know what it looks like it looks exactly like what people now call aliens they call them grays about this big kind of gray in color big eyes little nose that's exactly what came out of the spirit realm when this beast Aleister Crowley summoned him with his magic. It's the same exact being that's on the cover of that book, Communion, the famous book, where this guy said he was visited by these little grays all the time. Are they all, do they all just eat bad tacos before they went to bed that night? And they're just having bad nightmares? No, they're real. They're very real. Don't be scared. Yes, there's fallen angels that appear in different ways. But there's godly angels, and there's twice as many godly angels as fallen angels. And our commander-in-chief is the king of kings. Amen. The lion. Satan comes as a roaring lion, but Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. We're on the winning side. Those fallen angels, 
Man, they're shaking in their boots. The last thing they want us to know is the authority we've been given by Jesus. Remember when Jesus walked in the room and that demon possessed guy jumped out and said, Oh, Son of God, why have you come to torment us before our time? They know their time's coming up. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's just something to be aware of. That's all. Now in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8, Paul says this, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now if you break that down in the Greek, what Paul is saying, the word angel there means messenger. And he says the word heaven in the Greek is the second heaven where the physical universe is. And the word gospel is good news. Well, what's the good news? How to live forever. So what Paul is saying is, if a messenger from the physical universe comes here and says, oh, relax, I got the way for you to live forever, but it's other or different than what we've given to you, let him be accursed. And you may say, well, that's never going to happen. That's ridiculous. Well, then Paul is just... The Holy Spirit gave Paul to say this for no reason at all, right? He just made it up out of clear blue sky. I've told you this story before. I don't even know if this woman's still alive. But for many years, a woman named Shirley Knight lived in Colorado. And people would pay $1,500 for the weekend to go visit her. And this woman, last time I saw her, video of her many, many years ago, was like a 60-year-old um, blonde woman, you know, attractive woman, just normal looking. She would come in and sit in a chair, and all these people, doctors, lawyers, bankers, businessmen, would all be sitting there with her notepad, and she would sit in a chair, and all of a sudden she would convulse, her head would go back, and her eyes would roll back in her head, and a man's voice came out. I saw this, I heard it. I wish I could get a copy of it again. And the voice, the man's voice would say, My name is Ramtha. I'm a 75 million year old alien from another galaxy. I'm here to enlighten you. What did Satan say to Eve? Half God said, Oh, you can eat of all these other trees, but this tree here, the reason he doesn't want you to eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is because... If you do, you'll know, you'll be like the gods. Which gods? Small g, the sons of God, who came and intermingled with the women. See, God wanted Adam and Eve and all of us to live in Eden and be total ignorant of, of murder, rape, torture, heartache. He didn't want us to know anything. But Eve ate that, and so did Adam. I'm not putting all the blame on the woman. Adam ate it too, and because of that, turn on the news. Murders every day, rape every day, heartache, torture. You hear these atrocities because they ate of that fruit. And Ramtha wants to enlighten everybody. The Mormons teach that Elohim was once a man, and he became a god. And he had... He came to earth and he impregnated a, a woman, sound kind of familiar to the sons of God story in Genesis 6, and he had two sons. One was named Jesus, one was named Lucifer. Jesus wanted to save the world by dying for it. But his brother Lucifer wanted to save the world by enlightening it. Well, Jesus is not the brother of Lucifer. Amen. Jesus is the creator of Lucifer. That's but right. he made him as the light one, the beautiful one. He still wants to come as an angel of light. But he ain't. He's a light bulb. There's no power to him. That light bulb's been turned off. So, what Paul is saying is someday... There's going to be messengers from the physical universe to come and say, I have another gospel. Because one of the things that Ramtha said, and I'll never forget this, and here's all these people just jotting down everything that's in the Bible is called demon possession, but now that we're sophisticated, it's called channeling. Ooh, that's great, channeling. 
but you're just listening to a demon lie to you. And one of the things it said is, pay no attention to those born again Christians. They're too closed minded. They will stop you on your journey to enlightenment. Aww. Oh, we're spoiling their fun. I had somebody come to me once and say, you know what, Dave, you're too narrow minded. And I said, you know what, you're absolutely right. Because Jesus said narrow is the way that leads to life. Amen. So I'm trying to stay on that. Why, you want to be open-minded like a sewer? And just believe anything you've got to say? Because broad is the way to destruction, and many there be that follow it. That's right. But Paul is saying that even if an alien, so-called alien, we know they're fallen angels, comes, oh, I just came from Alpha Centauri, and I'm here to give you good news. There's no God. There's no sin in the world. You just need to be enlightened. We're here to come and rescue you. And you may say, well, who in the world would believe foolishness like that? Mm -hmm. Do you ever hear of a guy named Tom Cruise? Mm -hmm. Do you ever hear of a guy named John Travolta? Yeah. Yeah. How about an actress named Christy Alley? And many, many others that are Scientologists. And you know what they believe? That 75 million years ago, sound familiar? They were dropped off on the planet Earth, and while they lived, and then the aliens went away, but they're coming back for them. But while you're living on this Earth, you have these icky things and you call thetans. And if you pay $100,000 through Scientology, you can work your way up the ladder. Interesting. Their way to enlightenment is going up the ladder. I'm sorry, no thanks, my ladder is Jesus. And he's already Amen. paid. It doesn't cost right. me nothing except my life. But they believe, so when the aliens come back, Tom Cruise is going to be a general on the planet Earth. And all he's overcome, he's an overcoming thetan. And the aliens are going to use him to enlighten the world. So don't tell me people don't believe this stuff. You know, the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind was released in 1977. And then in 1981, Steven Spielberg made another movie called E.T. And all it is is just to entertain us and to prepare us for the concept of beings from another planet coming here. Now, if I preach this sermon to you and tell you about UFOs, I say, oh, that pastor, he's pretty nuts, though, right? But you'll go pay your $10 to go sit in the movie theater for two hours and let them pour that stuff into your brain. <laughs> What's in the movie theaters now? Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman, all these superheroes. And that's okay, that's normal. But just don't read something out of the Bible and say, you mean aliens are going to come here from another planet? What a wacko. But let's go see the next movie. <laughs> Did you know that Steven Spielberg has a museum in one of his homes? One of his many homes? Because it pays really good to, sh to propagate this message. He has a museum where he pays people who claim they've been abducted by aliens and he'll, he has a surgeon who extracts whatever was implanted in them and he has a museum of implants that, that people say aliens put inside them. Oh, you believe in that? What a nut! I'm just telling you what Steven Spielberg's doing. Don't call me a nut. He's got a museum and he's paying people for it. But that's normal. That's okay. But don't you preachers start talking about this. You might be some nut. Nut job. In Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse eleven, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God's going to say, "You don't want to know the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm shouting it from the housetops. I've got a Bible. Just about on every street corner in America is is a church. Of course." You know, I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people it's getting harder and harder to find a church where people can honestly preach the real gospel. But if you don't want to know the truth, God says, that's okay. I'm going to just give you over and let this strong delusion come and control you. And the delusion is aliens are coming and they have all the answers. And in Luke 21, verse 26, Luke 21 is Matthew 24's version of the same thing. What Jesus said is going to happen at the end before he comes back. He says this, Men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. 
for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. People are going to start seeing more and more things coming on the earth and their hearts are going to fail them for fear. It's going to scare the daylights out of them. Because now that the government has opened up to hundreds of people doing testimonies of things that they've seen, there's a government organization called SETI. Search for Extraterrestrial something. I forget what the last T stands for. Intelligence. That's what it is. And they're sending messages out in space saying, we're here, we're here, come find us, we're here. And the fallen angels are saying, you people are dumber than a brick. A, a brick. <laughs> We're here, and we're going to come, don't worry. We're going to deceive every single one of you that will believe it. And you may say, oh, come on, people are never going to be that crazy. Did you ever hear of the Roman Catholic Church? It's just a little fly-by-night organization. You may have heard of it, I don't know. <laughs> Did you know that the Roman Catholic Church owns two of the largest planetariums in the world? One's in Rome. The other one is in Arizona. And you know what they do? They just look in the sky for aliens. And the Vatican has an astronomer who's been sanctioned by the Pope. And some of his writings are very interesting. He says it's not a matter of if the aliens come to Earth. It's a matter of when the aliens come to Earth. And he's, he wrote in another writing, he said, our brother St. Francis of Assisi has told us that all of creation, we are all God's brothers and sisters. So when the aliens come here, now see, we were born on earth, so we're susceptible to original sin. But the aliens are coming here from outside the earth. They're not susceptible to original sin, so they're pure, and they're going to come and teach us. And he says, I can't wait to be one of the first ones to serve an alien communion. So don't tell me people aren't going to receive them. And don't tell me it's not going to happen. Why would Paul say, even if a messenger from the second heaven comes and tells you a way to get to heaven other than what we told you, let him be accursed. In other words, danger, Will Robinson, lost in space, Star Trek, all of them. Oh, but it's just fun entertainment. Yeah, okay. But it's preparation opening us. When uh, Drew Barrymore says goodbye to E.T. and he goes, I will be with you right here. And he points to her pineal gland. Telecommunication. Mm. Well, Elon Musk wants to put a computer chip right here. And I was listening to a video yesterday about some wacko guy that needs to be smacked and he's going to be someday unless he gets right with God. But he's talking about how we can someday, very soon, put your soul in a flash drive. And you can just keep it there. And you can live forever. And Elon Musk's girlfriend's got a song that she's singing about, Oh, I'm alive forever, but it's so difficult to not have a body to move anymore. And they just want to suck your soul out and put it in a flash drive and just float it in outer space. But you won't have a body to move. No, thank you. If that's eternity in your kingdom, I'd rather let this body fall into the ground or be raptured and live forever in God's kingdom Amen. with a glorified body. Amen. And I know not what I'm going to be like, but I know I'm going to be like Jesus. That's right. And it's forever and forever and forever. So, I'll close with this. This is Dave's theory. This in 15 cents will get you a stale donut. Don't hang your hat on this. I could be totally wrong. But this is how I see a possible scenario. <coughs> Louis Farrakhan has said the mothership is circling the earth, waiting to take away all the bad people. The New Agers are waiting for a harmonic convergence that's going to be a global cleansing to get rid of all the bad people out of here, and they can go then be you know, re-educated. So I can very easily see someday, I've read you a few scriptures, we're going to see that same portal that John did with a talking trumpet saying, come up hither. If we're still here alive when Jesus comes back and 
the way the world's looking, he could be back in about 15 minutes, the way I see the news. But I'm going to see that portal, and I'm going to go up there and meet him in the air. Well, what's going to happen to the world when all of a sudden millions of people are gone? How are you going to explain that, CNN, MSNBC? How are you going to explain that? Perfect example. Perfect explanation. As we're going up, the aliens are coming down. And they're going to say, just relax, it's okay, we got everything under control. And they say, take us to your leader. And the leader is going to be the leader of a one world government. And the leader, is that guy is going to be called the son of perdition or the antichrist. And they're going to go with him and he's going to say, yeah, these guys are good guys. They're on our side. And they're going to say, what is happening to the planet Earth? is there's a global cleansing and all those people that were taken away they're bad they're negative they're too closed-minded they're not open-minded they don't want to be enlightened like we are and there's going to be a perfect explanation of how millions of people left in a rapture and if the days were not shortened even the very elect would be deceased right. that means the days are going to be shortened and the very elect won't be deceived. But if you think it's hard serving Jesus now, you don't want to go through the tribulation. That's right. So, now that I've got you very depressed <laughs> and very concerned, just remember this. Jesus is coming back. Amen. 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 And it's never going to be good around here. It's, you know, people say, I can't wait till things go back to normal. Well, someone showed me the other day, normal ain't coming back, but Jesus is. Amen. Normal is a setting on your washing machine. There's no normal in this world till Jesus comes back. And guess what? All this is screaming, Jesus is coming back. And I want Him to come back. Amen. Because He's the Prince of Peace. He's the King of all kings. He's going to come and make everything right. And all this foolishness, and all this wickedness, and all the murder and all the hurt. I mean, people are hurting. And Jesus, He's going to say, enough is enough. And He's coming back. And when He comes back, He's coming back with 10,000 and thousands and thousands of His followers. And that's me and you. And I can't wait. So I say, the way the Apostle John ended the Bible, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to pray, but you know what? I'm going to pray two things, that the spirit of fear, God has not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but power, love, and a sound mind, that nobody is going to be influenced or touched in any way by the spirit of fear. But also, we're going to pray, because every single one of us, we're at different levels of our spiritual walk and different levels of commitment, but we're going to pray that our hearts are right with God so that as soon as we walk out that door, if we hear a trumpet, we're ready to go. Amen. 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 So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. I pray, Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost and power, that you come and you touch each one of us. Yes. And Lord, yes. Where the devil would try to bring fear and discouragement into our hearts, we rebuke it because where the, where the Spirit is of the Lord is there's liberty. And give us that liberty, each one of us. Put that anticipation, like that prophecy we heard earlier today. Dry bones rise up and be alive because the King, soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. But Lord, we're going to pray this prayer. Some of us for the first time, some of us many, many times. You never get tired of hearing us pray this. But we're going to pray, Lord, that our heart is right with you. So everybody just repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on a cross for my sins. I believe you died on a cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. Amen.